What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central store processor? Alright guys, you can probably tell by the equipment that I have in front of me that I'm about to start testing insulated instrumentation and these instrumentations specifically are instruments that were sent out for repair. So these all happen to be laparoscopic instrumentation. Um, but before we even do insulated testing, this is a huge and important part of the step. It should be done every time the instruments are being processed. But before we use this, we need to use these. Okay? So proper lighting. And you know, take your instrumentation. Your first thing that you want to do is you want to try to pull back on the insulation and inspect the distal collar. Okay? The distal collar should have no gap between the insertion point and the insulation itself. If you see a gap, reason being that is a segue point for uh, fluid and for microbes that can be trapped in between the insulation and the actual sheet. So that should be a nice seal. It should also shouldn't be overlapping the insert in there. You're going to inspect the internal channel there to make sure that the locking mechanism in there is not collapsed or cracked. Okay, it should be intact. You're going to run your fingers down the insulation to feel for any imperfections. You're going to check the seal from the insulation to the port. Okay, there should be no chipping, cracking, um, or peeling away from there. You should not be able to see there is a blue rubber gasket or whatever color gasket in there to create a watertight seal. You should not be able to visualize that. Your port cover should not have any cracks and ideally you should have a little port cover um, adapter on each instrument, okay? Um, but if not, that can be um, many times you see those are missing. Okay, from your port, there should be no cracks or anything around that port uh, housing. Where the port uh, housing meets the actual uh, handle insert, okay? They, this is actually able to screw out. You shouldn't see a gap in between the actual metal and the plastic housing. Looking further down, you should be looking at the O-ring that uh, houses and holds the little snap seals on there. Okay, there's a little snap seal, a little cover there that when you place into the handle, it connects to the handle. That should be intact. That little O-ring, that little washer mechanism should be nice and smooth. No cracks, chipped, and definitely not missing. Of course, you want to inspect the um, proximal end to make sure that there's no sharp edges or bends on that as well. So we've conducted our visual examination with the naked eye. You want to use a lighted magnifier to do some deeper dives of inspection in the instrument. Nothing so um, technical in that you're spending X amount of time, but you want to look for any imperfections along the shaft and along the actual ceiling, okay? So we confirm our visual inspection is now time to do a leak test to see if there's any imperfections or break in the seal. Okay, I'm not going to do every single instrument in here, but I'm going to give an example of testing a sheath and inspecting one of the old generation single um, devices, right? Again, this came back from, uh, from repair, so we're going to do a full inspection and testing of this device as well, and I'll show you how to inspect this as well. All right, so bear with me as actually let's go through the steps. So let's do our device or devices off. Um, according to the IFUs, you should wear gloves. Okay, so we're going to put on a pair of gloves, and I am going to be completely honest with you. I rarely wear gloves when doing insulation testing. I I am very uh, uh, tolerant of the shocks. I've never been shocked before, so you know, so you should wear gloves to prevent any shocks, especially when operating in the high voltage um, setting. So, with your unit off, you have color-coded cords, black to black. Okay, the 90 degree ends here, and then we're going to connect the 
90 degree to the top, okay? This allows you to keep your unit either stationed, standing up, or laying flat so you can see. Okay, you're next gonna grab the ends and you're gonna connect the handle to the red and then whatever attachment for lead testing we're gonna do it because we're doing the laparoscopic instrumentation, we're gonna use the ring attachment here. And the other end needs to have your alligator clip. All right, with these two items separated, you're gonna go ahead and turn your unit on, okay? And ensure that it's on a low voltage because that's what we need right now. All right, so let's do some visual here as to what we're gonna be looking at here. All right, so with your instrumentation, you're gonna grab your alligator clip and attach it to any metal portion on the proximal end of the instrument, okay? You don't want to put it on the plastic, it's on the metal, okay? With your index finger, you want to hold your instrument up almost like a gun, okay? And then you're going to grab the appropriate size ring, okay? You don't want to go too small, you don't want to go too big, okay? So you should see the texture at the very distal tip. There is metal there, but along the whole instrument, all the way to the base, you should not see any kind of resistance this is a passing instrument all right let's go ahead and turn our instrument off and let me show you how to do a single unit okay single piece laparoscopic instrument again you're going to do the same thing this came from repair same thing we're going to go up this little tip and we're going to try and slide that collar back that collar should not move okay this is a locking mechanism, so you want to make sure first that it does lock and that it unlocks. Make sure that if you are articulating and it is grasping, that it does work and that the grasping is the jaws meet and are aligned, okay? Next, if this is a rotating shaft, we want to make sure that the item rotates as appropriate. And then again, with visualization is you want to feel for any imperfections ensure that the seal from the from the insulation and the base is complete your flush port has its seal there is no cracks there is no defects on the turn knob and it's turning smoothly this actually has a connector for a uh, cauterizing cord or a um, some kind of electrical cord on here Okay, you want to make sure that that's not loose. Any screws or pins on there, you should check to make sure that they are secure. Okay, any locking mechanism should be tested to ensure that it works and holds the instrument in the locked position. And then there is, for this generation, there is a finger ring. You want to make sure that the finger ring is attacked, not cracking. And these finger rings should come off for cleaning when processing. All right, so let's test this device as well, okay? So, with your unit in the off position again, we're going to attach your alligator clip to the cauterizing port. That is the metal port here. You actually can also connect it to any kind of metal on here, but preferably to the cauterizing port. You're going to turn your unit on. Okay. on the low setting and again use the appropriate size ring for testing make sure that the jaw is closed the jaw is open of course it's not going to go in the jaw is closed you should hear detection on the end but along the shaft of the instrument there should be no beeping and that right there is a passing test so so far so good instruments that have come back from repair are doing good all right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves, keep it 100, continue educating yourself. Till next time, peace.